Hi everybody. Hi everybody. I'm hoping you can see me. I'm just going to try and drag my presentation down. Um, it's a little bit like we've got a great picture of my dad, by the way, um, in one of those passport photo booths, and um, and he's got like this kind of a picture. There, there are only three faces, aren't there, of a passport photo booth? There's that one, then there's that, and then there's boom. Um, so that's probably what I'm looking like to you guys now. So, upload my presentation, and we are off. Yay! And I am just going to try and say it how it is tonight, but I, ob I obviously appreciate that. I hold a lot of responsibility here with a, a cross-net work uh, webinar. Um, and my intention tonight is to give value to you, and I want to just reinforce the faith. I really do. Um, but also, I want to tell a story, and the story is my story. I'm going to tell you my story. Um, and um, <clears throat> it started when I was age six. <laughs> no, no, seriously. When my first school report, um, all they had to say about me is she's, very, she's loquacious, um, which means basically she can't shut up. She's a chatterbox. So I appreciate I've only got three hours now, so we'd best get cracking, haven't we? Um, so where does it all start? It started just basically with me and Paul. Um, and we met, uh, we were married by age 19 and 21, but I tell you where we met, we met in, a, in a, about quarter to six on a Monday morning in a milking parlour on a dairy farm, and, um, and I had yellow trousers on, and he was in the milking parlour covered in basically and um, he'd got like long well his hair was probably longer than mine just the same as mine now but longer and and blonde and he was stood behind this um, like a light bulb that like shone behind him and there and I, and I looked at him and I thought oh my god I was 18 he was 16 and I thought I, I didn't think I would find you like so young that saved like a whole load of frog kissing for me um, so definitely love at first sight and I still adore the guy today um, and all we've done ever is we've just tried all sorts, all sorts just to improve our lot, really we have, we've worked so hard. What kind of things have we done when we milk cows, we've spread slurry, we've silage, we've baled hay, we've plucked turkeys, we've bagged potatoes, we worked in RTC, ready trust chickens. Ugh. We collected eggs, we planted parsnips, I've been a farm secretary, we made wooden crafts, we've had a market store, we've decorated people's homes, we've fitted central heating, um, we've fitted heating and ventilation on factories, not me, Paul, HGV driver, teaching assistant, we worked in a church, home shopping deliveries, gardening, grave digging, bookkeeping, you name it, the, you know, the, the things that we've had a go at just to try and get on a bit, you know, are endless. But what I'll say is that we've always been like hard working, we're keen and we're capable and we've always been willing to, hard, to work hard and we've always been really open minded to opportunities because I always knew that there was more than one Range Rover and there was more than one five bedroom detached house, seriously, you know, other people have these things, why not me? So we got married, age 90, Paul was 19, I was 21, what a cradle snatcher and um, these six years later, these two popped up. Seriously, that could be a family portrait for us. <laughs> I mean, it just says it all. Paul there is like, he's a real like, oh, he's, he's a real Neanderthal. He's like a, he's, he's a bit redneck, you know, it's a bit like living with Crocodile Dundee sometimes, but do you know what? I feel really safe. I, I'm not a feminist. I like a man who can put bread on the table. I really do. And he does it all the way. He's a real family man and he's done it, he's worked all his life just for our family. Sat up on top of him there looks Abigail, yeah, the queen of the castle. She really is like, come on, Dad, make something happen for me. And uh, she, she, and, and she actually, they, they love each other. And at the same time, they on the right hand side there. That's just me, like, for goodness sake, Sean, what have you done now? And that little picture of Sean there, in in my mind, I don't care how old he is or how big he gets. That when I think of Sean, that is what I see. And like, oh, what's happened to me now? That Sean once broke his arm, and I didn't believe him. And Paul took him to the hospital the next day, and he came on with a pot on his arm. I'm like, well, that's just Sean all over, absolutely. So at that point in time, when we had those two children, Paul and I were working um, in. Um, well, I was the accountant at a Peugeot dealership in Huddersfield Town Centre, and Paul was a registrar for grievance services with the local authority. 
and um, basically that was that's us, both of us, suited and booted, absolute life frustrated and skint. And that was the point in our lives when we were introduced to Amway um, by my sister who lived in Africa. So she joined the Amway business. And um, we had to have a surrogate sponsor because it, it's not like um, Clean Easy where you can just like, I can have somebody front line to me in Spain or in Ireland or wherever, you know, Birmingham. It, it wasn't like that in, in this company. Amway stands for American Way. Um, you know, and some, they were way ahead of the time. I loved their concept. I loved the, the concept of network marketing. But their business model just did not transfer to the UK. The products were just too expensive. And they were hard to shift. They really were hard to shift. They were really high quality, concentrated, biodegradable. You know, the packaging, even the printing on the packaging was, was uh, you know, friendly green whatever it is anyway but honest to god we could not ship those products who wants to pay 10 quid for a bottle of washing up liquid when fair is just 99p so we, we immediately hit a brick wall we were, we were taught to recruit people in a very covert way you know we chat people up and find out what their weaknesses were they couldn't afford to send their kids to, their kids to to private school or they couldn't go on holiday this year or couldn't have a new car whatever and then we would then like store up that information as ammunition to use against them later when we were talking to them to try and get them to look at our business. It was just, it was it was horrendous. We, and we never saw any proof of any income, not 100% the whole time I was in there. Um, we never saw any income checks or knew what anybody's turnover was. And, and the, like, the little get out is, it's not about what I'm making, it's about what you could make. Well, I'm thinking, if I want to buy your chip shop, I want to see the turnover. And that's what I love about Clean Easy. We can show proof of in income to people. And we, we always just felt like we were just covert operators, like there was something like we were on some kind of a stealth mission. We loved the, the, the idea of networking. It just felt really bad. And I've got to say that after 18 months in the business, and we never quit, we just drifted away, we've got, seven people on our front line, three of those were deep, three deep, each of those, so that's like 21 people, and you were encouraged, because you shouldn't, you couldn't shift the products, you were encouraged to at least buy yourself 100 quid worth of gear a month, so if you imagine that was a, a clean easy business there, seven wide, three deep, all shifting 100 quid a month, you, you'd have a volume bonus of about 200 quid going in your bank, £6.52 was our biggest check in that business. So you've got to really pick your opportunity when you start looking around for businesses to join. But <clears throat> when we started in network marketing, we, we experienced like a really a, a tough, tough pain barrier. Um, and we were attacking our own market like you wouldn't believe. Not physically attacking them, but obviously, you know, who, who do you know? We wrote a list of 500 people and we introduced them all to the idea of clean easy. And when it's your own market, that's when rejection hurts the most. And we experienced either one of those emotions. Either people wouldn't listen to us or they were rude to us. And we didn't know why. You know, when I, when I got the phone call, join Amway, it's like, yeah, this is going to be great. The first call I made to my friend Stephanie, hey, I found this great way to make some extra money. Do you want to have a look at what we're doing? Oh, yeah, of course I do, unless it's bloody Amway. And I'm like, what? You know about Amway? Apparently, the whole of the world knew about Amway. There was only me. I thought only I knew about Amway and nobody else knew. But it was the other way around. You know, that top right-hand corner, that actually is a picture of Paul's mother. She she wouldn't even let us say the word Amway in her house. And Paul's brother, when we tried to recruit him, he said, well, I'm, I'm, why, am I, why would I do that to make you rich? We were just like, you know, it, it wasn't a good experience for us. We were fairly devastated. But what did Amway teach us? Okay, and we're taught us the value of personal development. And personal development is key to putting you on a path to realisation of if it's going to be, it's up to me. And we very quickly realised that if it's going to be, it's up to us. And what I mean by that is not by working in somebody else's organisation to build their dream for them. We had to strike out somehow and make something happen on a self-employed basis. What we also discovered was how to talk to people, and I bless that business, honestly, for teaching me how to talk to people. I'm telling you now, I could take you down to the bus station in Huddersfield, and you can point at any person in there. I'd get their inside leg measurement off, and within five minutes, I'm seriously that good at talk, getting information out of people. But the thing is, what it also taught us, and this was devastating, right, is that network marketing doesn't work. 
it completely stole it stole our hopes and our dreams that we were we'd found something that was going to set us free and not only that make us rich and you know I'm kind of sensing that that's how a lot of people are feeling right now in the clean easy network that there's something there that might be stolen away from you and I've got to say no absolutely no we know why we've got a pickle in the warehouse we've had it from Michael Katkar that it's all going to end by the end of the month anybody who hasn't seen, watched the Dublin play, the, 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 the playback and the live stream watch it he said it on there and we saw JR stand on stage and tell us that he's got it we, we haven't got an issue everybody just needs to stop consuming all the negativity that there is online because it will destroy you it, it won't destroy clean easy it will destroy you and you, you and your business so at this point in our lives okay we um, we just got busy looking for something because we, we didn't know about clean easy well we knew about clean easy but we didn't know about clean easy if you know what I mean so clean easy wasn't an option for us in fact it was quite the opposite but what we do is we got stuck in looking searching for something that we could do and we ended up on a dairy farm with half a dozen milk crowns and it was great seriously it was great for quite a few years my mum had passed away my dad was living with us we'd got like resident childcare Paul and I could do what the heck we wanted we were out all day and night working we were making some inroads it was going great and then my dad died and that's really when it all started falling apart for us. We had to start selling off bits of the business. I could no longer be running around all night um, delivering pints of milk and doing everything else that we did. And we initially, we went down the route of employing people. And um, we would soon discovered that you couldn't pay anybody enough to get up at 1 o'clock in the morning and deliver milk. So the number of times I got a phone call at one o'clock in the morning from Paul, you're going to have to come out, they haven't turned up, and I'd be like ringing my friend, Bridget, Bridget, can I put my kids in my spare room, turning up with two kids in a sleeping bag at 2am and like passing them over on the, on the doorstep. She never complained, never once has that woman complained to me about uh, how we abused our children. <laughs> but the thing is, it got even worse than that, because we, Paul and I have always been in solution mode, we always have and we always are, and we always, hopefully always will be. But having our kids with somebody else at two o'clock in the morning, you know, handing them over on the doorstep, but asleep in a sleeping bag, it wasn't a solution. It really wasn't. So we decided we'd take the, the situation in hand completely. We'd keep it all in house, and we'd just completely like set them on as child labour. And that's, I mean, for God's sake, don't tell the social because I don't know if they can arrest you retrospectively, but if it's a possibility, don't anybody squeak out a word of what I'm telling you now. Because what we used to do then is put the kids in the car, I drove to the milk truck, we put the kids in the milk truck in the sleeping bags, I put the milk, some of the milk in the car and we both went our separate ways and got rid of the milk that way and it was horrendous. But what actually was the final straw that made me seriously think something's got to change here was um, when I got a phone call from Paul about half past four one morning to tell me we'd lost Sean and um, the the cold fear and dread that grips your heart when somebody rings you and I mean it was like year big I, I was like well this it just like I, I was devastated I was like shocked I was horrified I was panic stricken and and it was like well this is this will change everything now this will change everything um, and and it actually was a happy quite well we laugh about it now but it was it was such a little dot of a thing that he'd, he'd fallen down in between the there's like a, a cab seat and a settee in the milk truck and he'd fallen down in between and wriggled under all like the spare coats and stuff fallen back to sleep and then they thought that when they'd open the doors and run off with the pint and they would come back they thought that they'd driven off without him and left him in the street somewhere and you know retraced the, the, themselves and couldn't find him. so it was a, it was an awful thing to happen but what happened was it, it set me on a path of really trying to discover something that I could do to get us out of the situation I was looking for something I could do from home and I was looking for something that I could do with as little capital as possible I was, I was willing to work hard in every little pocket of time that I possibly could find. I would, wanted to work hard to grow this thing, whatever it was. 
um, and and get Paul out of a job. I married the guy because I adore him and I wanted to spend time with him. I didn't want him out working a job, being away all the time, and, and we see each other on an evening when we both jiggered and bounced, sleep on the sofa. I wanted to actually live with him and live my life with him because he's really good fun. So we, I started looking for for something which I didn't realise at the time, but I was looking for Clean Easy and I got loads of information about Clean Easy before I joined and I'm sorry if you are one of the people that sent me information and I didn't join your business. Um, but we eventually got a phone call from a guy called Glenn, Glenn Royston. He put a flyer through Paul's auntie's letterbox. He said to Paul's auntie, do you want to join the business? She joined. He then said, who do you know? She said, we know Paul and Helen. So he rang and we were we were sat in the dining room in our little farmhouse having our evening meal and the phone rings and um, Paul who never answers the phone um, I mean at the time he had a mobile phone he didn't know what it was it was always switched off it was a nightmare um, so he never answered the phone and he shot up he, he shot out of the room like a whippet and me and the kids are like what what's, what's going on here and answered the phone, came back in, and um, I'm like, well, were you expecting a call? <laughs> I mean, it was quite amusing. And and uh, it's like, oh, it's just Glenn. It's, Glenn's coming round tomorrow. So we're on a, on a dairy farm with 300 cows, and the herdsman is called Glenn. So I said, well, I hope he is, because I'm not milking 300 cows in the morning. And that was the end of it. I never even gave it another thought. It was just going to be coming out for a moan about whatever. I wasn't interested. I, I've got other things on my mind, quite frankly. Um, so, 2 o'clock the next day, Glenn turns up. Glenn from Clean Easy. And um, we basically had a, Paul and I had a fight on the doorstep, like a bit of a row, like you you're kidding me, aren't you? How many times have I sat this one off? We know network marketing doesn't work. What are we thinking? You're an idiot. You're wasting his time. All the rest of it. This was me and me saying all this. And um, Paul said, well, just hear the guy out. I've told him he's probably going to go away without empty handed. If he's willing to come and sit with you for half an hour and explain how it works. And I'm like, I know how it works. I know I don't want Okay, come in and show me. And I eventually joined to prove that it wouldn't work. So basically, Clean Easy found us. We got our books on the Wednesday, we put them out on the Thursday, we picked them up on the Saturday, and I had orders. I remember standing in the street picking up that first catalogue, and it had an order in it for, for $19.99 for a tumble dry condenser. And I stood there thinking, what people buy this? That's what I thought about Cleanies. Even after I joined, I still thought that. So there was an, an opportunity meeting the following Monday, and, and I, I rang and invited loads of people. Three of them actually turned up and two of them signed up. So within a week, we've got customers and we've got team. And do you know what we've got more than anything? More important than anything, we've got hope back. And what we did then was we, we set about planning to get ourselves in a position so that we could go all out with Clean Easy, and that's what we did. In our first year in Clean Easy, Paul retailed £65,000. And over the years, the slog that we've done to put that in place to make that business grow, Clean Easy has pretty much turned our life into a tea party, it really has. We've been on six holidays with the company, like amazing holidays. We've won the Executive Challenge Trophy. We're earning between three and a half, four thousand pounds £4,000 every month. You know, and that, the thing is, it does take some time for you to get to love your clean, easy business. And I understand that, and there'll be people who definitely don't love their clean, easy business right now. Give yourself some time to come to love it, because I'm not joking. If you had our lifestyle, you'd work a lot harder than you're doing now. But the hardest work that you're ever going to do, right, in clean easy, and the most profitable work that you're ever going to do, is find your reason why. It really is. Certain goals, proper, well-established goals that you know will, will help you withstand anything that's thrown at you. You know, like it takes deep roots, doesn't it? Deep roots to withstand a hurricane. Now, you know, we're all going to take an emotional kicking in network marketing we all feel exhausted at some point in time, you know, with like the time and effort that we put in with people, when things like what have happened over the last couple of pay periods, 90% of what we do is a waste of time, if only we could just identify that 
you know, and just do that. Wouldn't that, what a charm that would be? Well, we can't come with a trick. There is a trick. It's to increase your resilience to that frustration by really, really getting attached to your reason why. I can't stress that enough. I really cannot stress that enough. And then what do you need to do? You need to keep it simple. Keep it simple. If an eight-year-old can't explain it, don't do it. Find some customers. Find some distributors. Teach your distributors to find some customers and find some distributors. And then do you know what we're doing? We're just on a trail of mastering the mundane, just rinse and repeat. Now, if you pass your sell by date in one opportunity, in my opinion, you've passed it in all of them. It's not about the opportunity, it's about you. And that is why your personal development is absolutely key. It's key to staying ahead of the game. If you work on increasing your understanding of what makes people tick, different personality types, if you attach some emotion to your goals and your desires instead of to the mechanics of the business, that can wear you out. If you're attached to the mechanics of it and not to your goals and your dreams, it will wear you out. You've got to discipline yourself and you've got to discipline your disappointment. And you've really got to try and master the mundane. And I promise you, you'll be successful. So let me try and give you just a few little indicators of what I think has been successful for us in our business. We've retained two BOMs per month, business opportunity meetings per month. There's um, a fabulous one at the uh, Best Western Hotel down in Long Eaton run by Tracy and Harvey in our business. It's an absolutely blinking, cracking meeting, honest to God. And it's an open meeting. You can go and feel the energy in that room. Whatever those guys are on, I need some, honestly, because they've got way more energy than I have. But we've stuck to the principle of real people. You know, we're not computers. And as lovely as webinars are, if you all were now in my front room and we were having a laugh, you would feel the energy. You would feel my emotion. It would be a different experience to this one right now. You cannot replace that belly-to-belly -belly experience. So, you know, you need to be thinking about getting yourself around um, the meetings and the events. Another thing that we did was we nurtured our leaders. We're running a volunteer army, and you've got to be content to allow people to grow at their own pace. You know, you can't bully people into working at the same speed that you can work at. So, I mean, I... <laughs> One of the most frustrating aspects of the business for me is that there are people out there who have different opinions to me. <laughs> okay, so if everybody just did what I said, the businesses would be huge, we'd all be rich, and everybody's life would be amazing. But other pesky opinions keep popping up and slowing job down, and I'm just like constantly, constantly fighting, you know, what sometimes feels like just like stupidity on fire. So that's not news to any of you, is it? Because you all feel like that. I expect a lot of you are thinking, mm, just like me, I'm thinking that as well. You're nodding in agreement because, you know, there's a reality there and that's the crux of it. You have just got to keep moving forward with your volunteer army, you know, without losing enthusiasm for the journey, basically. What we also do is we have gold meetings. So we get all our gold together and it's a great excuse for a piece of paper. No. It's not. That's an, an opportunity for me and Paul to get together with our leaders and get to know them. We run team sizzles. Yeah, so that's an excuse for piss up. No, it's not. It really is not. That's an excuse for Paul and I to get to know our teams and our gold distributors teams. Team camps, okay, that's an excuse for piss up. So what we also do is we encourage individual team identities within the star group it wasn't always like that you know when people start branching off and we want to call our team listen to, we have got so many stars we've got shooting stars bright stars k stars a stars superstars rising stars we've got an inspired team as well they might be inspired stars i don't know i think they just call the inspired team but anyway we've got loads of stars all under that umbrella of the star group and it's absolutely fantastic and last year I was given the opportunity to stand on stage at the ICC to, to do a, a talk and I was looking out there at my team and I'm telling you, I nearly burst with pride at what we've achieved um, with our business. We've got our, our culture's catalogues basically. We don't have a knee-jerk reaction to a 25 quid business kit, the, the social media kit. We really don't. We've built our business on catalogues and we're just moving in. 
in the last couple of years into what's happening um, on social networking um, and on the internet. But we have got quite a few people who work online. We've got one lady who, who retails gold online. I mean, how fabulous is that? She's absolutely amazing. Um, but, you know, mainly we've got a stalwart bunch of catalogues. We run clean incentives. We do incentives and so do clean easy, do they not? Clean easy are just absolutely so clever. They know, clean easy know when we join the business that we've had the dream kicked out of us. They know that and they give us some temporary goals to aim for. Holidays, cars, whatever. Do you know, until we get our mojo back, until we can rediscover, you know, what, what it was that we wanted when we were 10 or 15 or 20 or whatever. And what I'd say to you is the time is going to pass in anyway. So the sooner you get on a mission to get some of those prizes, get some of those holidays and stuff, the quicker you'll actually discover your, your real own personal reason why. Now, when people come into the business, we, we just let them be whatever they're going to be. We, we don't chastise them for being whatever they are. We just incentivize them. We incentivize them to rise up. We do it. Clean, easy does it. And I think what you've got to do is you've got to imagine that frightened child inside everybody that you recruit because there is one, there is one, and just allow them to just mature at their own pace. And, and you, you need to be just like the beacon of light shining in the darkness, in their darkness. Look, look you can earn money, you can get a trip, you can get a car. You need to believe that others can find a way if you continue to shine your light for them through qualifying for incentives. Be it a box of books from your sponsor or a five-star holiday from Clean Easy. Use the incentives and go for them. They're there for everybody. Now, um, a couple of years ago, about two and a half, three years ago maybe, um, Paul and I realized that we really needed to get a handle on how many leads were going through our business. I think that's, um, it was a kind of a dawning of reality to us that the number of leads going through your business will dictate the speed of how quickly that team grows. And we currently have, um, because we started an ad crew all those years ago, about 100 people a month joining the star group. It's absolutely phenomenal. How do we keep that going while we run call training sessions? And um, we've really got like a hands-on culture in our business. We've, we've got a successful business because we know what works. We know anybody can do it, and we make sure that we are hands-on in teaching them what they need to do. Okay, and whatever derailments that we've encountered along the way, they've only served to make us stronger, both as individuals and as a team. And you know, we may have been further ahead, you know, without obstructions. But you know, you can learn a lot from failure. You can learn more from failure than you can from success. And you absolutely learn more about yourself and about other people. And you're better equipped to deal with future derailments when they occur. So like the situation we're in right now, a few years ago, I can't remember when it was, we qualified for Hong Kong. The front cover, we went in November, the front cover um, item was a beautiful, beautiful, it was a, like a bauble, a glass hand-blown bauble, and it had a little colour change in Christmas tree. It was absolutely beautiful. And within a week, they'd, they'd sold out. And uh, we went to Hong Kong, and we drove past this this humongous container yard where all the front cover products were. We were convinced of it in Hong Kong. It took eight weeks for them to arrive. Do you know what? We still, even though we didn't have the front cover product, and we were having to take orders and then deliver them at a later date, we still had an amazing high turnover, fabulous Christmas, because, you know, Christmas doesn't actually happen until the 25th of December. We didn't need to panic in October that we couldn't get the front cover product. So what we did is got a real handle on promoting events. So if you want to get a sense of what your turnover is going to be, learn this. Okay, There's a direct correlation between the bums, number of bums on seats at events in your business and your turnover to the tune of a thousand pound a bum. So now I've told you that, all you need to do is get good at promoting the event. And when you get there, sit together and make some noise because hanging out together just creates synergy. It creates a lot of synergy in your team when you hang out with each other. And that's your way forward if you want to create that. Start educating yourself about the industry and about the company, right? About the industry and the company. Now, 
I mean, all this, it's not the gospel according to St. Helen. It's just my take on what I've learned over, you know, the way, along the way when we've been in the business. But, you know, you must keep your own counsel and, and not be led like lambs to slaughter by wolves in sheep's clothing. You know, educate yourself. Think. Think. Don't, don't just read stuff and believe it. You know, Wikipedia is not true entirely. Ignorance is not bliss. It's expensive. And educating yourself, that's the biggest DIY job that you're ever going to undertake and probably the most expensive one as well. Probably the most expensive one if you do it properly. Because, you know, the books, the tapes, the meetings, the events, what you know, it's like a it's like a, a university education that you can that you can do yourself. Start improving your prospects of success through personal development and I firmly believe that our business is just a personal development business disguised as network marketing. That's my belief. What you've got to understand is that success is a habit that's governed by discipline so you need to discipline yourself to do the work and some of the work is reading and listening and, and educating yourself. Failure is a habit that's governed by a lack of discipline. But all the time that you're pursuing your own personal development career, you need to be aspiring not to have more, but to be more. Okay. So now, um, one of the other things that I think is, is paramount is that, you know, to be willing to share ideas and encouragement in, in an open environment, okay, without cross-lining. So here is the big, ugly head of cross-lining. Remember that you've got influence, okay, and how you are and how you behave impacts on those around you. And now we've got social media and we're using it like fury, okay, it impacts on those who aren't even around you. Just anybody who's on social media it will impact. Stand guard on the door to your mind and, and don't be afraid to use all the tools available to protect yourself from having any negative effects poured into your environment. Let's just let's just take a second here, right, to send thanks to, to Mark Zuckerberg for his amazing invention, the unfollow button, right? Now, guys, we are all one big family. I appreciate we are one big family. I have been absolutely overcome with emotion, and I've been absolutely overawed, absolutely overawed with like just the power of how we have all pulled together. We haven't just pulled together. We have literally closed ranks to protect each other. We have. In this, all that recent spate of what can only be described as industrial sabotage, in my opinion, you know, from outside, we've all witnessed that. And I've been absolutely overawed by it all. I, I truly have. But think about it. Family, yes. Strong together, yes. Absolutely. The only way that I can explain how I feel about crosslining is, is this, right? Much as I love my sister, I don't want her rearing or reprimanding my kids. I know what I'm doing, sister. I've got this, you know. And in my clean easy business, I really, really, really know what I'm doing. And I don't need anybody else to train my people. I really do not. We've got to have acceptable codes of conduct, conduct in, in, in network marketing because otherwise it doesn't work. Familiarity breeds contempt and it breeds a lack of respect for each other. Society wouldn't work, would it, if we, if we didn't all drive on the same side? You've got to have codes of conduct. Even pirates have a code, you know, so please, please, water your own grass, not anybody else's. We are... <clears throat> all in this together now. We may have come on different ships, but we're definitely all in this together right now. And we need to make the business work. And we need to work harder. Right now, we need to work harder. We don't need to down tools. Let me put it to you this way. If you've gone out and got £100 of of orders and £20 of that is out of stock, that's an issue. If you go out and get £20 of orders and £20 is out of stock, that is you out of business. You can't afford to down tools. You need to work harder. You know, Paul has been just consistent all throughout his clean, easy career. But this, just this year, okay, I've got here just his trackers. Can we see? Where, which way have I these, are his, these are his trackers. I'm just going to focus it. There's a, a, a line for each week. I'm going to focus on just on the week three, right? 
So you can probably see it there. Hopefully. Week three now. Total for the for the period so far in 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 orders is one thousand seven hundred and ninety one pounds fifty. Okay, but we just this week has picked up seven hundred and forty three pounds. In week three last period in nine it was five hundred and forty six. In eight it was seven hundred and forty. In seven it was six hundred and seventy eight. This is just in one week from a customer base. In six period six it was six hundred and fifteen. In period five it was seven hundred and sixty three. In period four it was six hundred and eighty two. In period three it was seven hundred and twenty two. In period two, period two is like the new period one isn't it it was 487 but still a half month with christmas in it was 487 period one 536 the guy was just consistent he just goes out there picking money up off doorsteps now i heard one of you then say something and i heard the other two think it right and what I heard was, oh, yeah, but how much of that is out of stock? Well, I'll tell you how much is out of stock. Out of that 743, 120 was out of stock. So he has placed an order for £623 today. He, re he received an order this morning that he, that he placed last week of, of, well, what would it have been? It's 538 was, was, was his pickup for last week. So... The retail's there, the profit is there, you know, despite everything that's happened, the only problem right now is the, that little mess in the warehouse. Don't stop, keep going. Once they've sorted out those like 300 metre rows of three pallets high that's a mislabeled, not labelled mixed pallets, you know, and, and they've found stuff, it is going to be an absolute breed, I promise you. I promise you. And what you need to do is promise yourself. Promise yourself that you're going to be the best that you can be in network marketing. You need to stay on the same emotional level at all times. You know, so I, don't, I don't mean that you know, don't show excitement or enthusiasm. I mean, don't be temperamental. Be predictable in your responses. My, my lot all know, if they, if they say something out of line, I'm going to whip their heads off. They all know that. I'm 100% I'm predictable. Okay? But don't be flighty and impetuous. Don't, you know, have measured responses to things. I'm, our lot are still waiting for me to get excited about online sales. They, they truly are. Right? I'm not excited about online sales. I'm interested. I'm observing it right now. Okay? I haven't made up my mind, you know, and people have said to me, and I've read this before, and somebody actually in my team quoted it to me the week before last, that leaders decide quickly and change their minds slowly. Well, I've got to say to you, is that is complete bollocks, absolutely. Leaders think things through. They devour the information and the statistics before they start deciding, you know, to, to leap in. So, you know, whatever you do in this business, you know, you be prepared to be misunderstood. But leave your ego at the door. Truly, leave your ego at the door. The other thing I want to say to you is, you know, stay in touch with your sponsor. They are the only person who 100% have, you know, your best interests at heart. And that is because your best interests are their best interests. And because we're, both, we're, we're, we're all just interested in ourselves at the end of the day. You know, it's not, it's not rocket science. But one of the things that really ticks me off is when I bring somebody into the business and they ring up and they say, oh, I'm sorry to bother you. And I'm thinking, to, I am so sorry, you know, that you say that every time you ring me, you are not bothering me. It's your responsibility, right, to ring your sponsor and bother them. Make them work for that support bonus. Bother your sponsor. Don't bother other people's sponsors because they're not then they're not paid to listen to you moaning. Bother your sponsor. And I'll tell you something else now. If you want to work, if you want the business to work faster, right, make some noise. Make some noise on your GSA. And make some noise by turning up to everything. Turn up to, to events like this, to events like the big one on Sunday. Go to the big one on Sunday. Turn up on the phone. Turn up in chats. Tur tur just turn up. Just turn up for your business, for everything. And finally, you know, just like keep sewing and growing, regardless of all the distractions and, and everything that we're going through right now, 80% of success, honestly, is just turning up. The other 20% is a right dog fight, and we can fight. We have shown over the last three periods how we can fight. But let me just leave you with this one, with this one thing now. My, um, my nephew, my, my um, sister's eldest boy, and um, they're Africans, she's lived in Africa for ages. 
um, he's um, he's a drummer, and he's a musical director for Carnival Cruise Line. And um, he had a month at home, um, and then two weeks ago he flew back out to his studio so he could get some band practice done and everything um, with all his, his um, musicians um, in Miami. And there in the harbour is the, the Carnival Cruise um, ship parked up in the harbour. And then they hear about um, Hurricane Irma coming in. And they took the decision to untie the ship and, and sail it out to sea into those, those horrendous waves and all that weather. Um, they set it free because that was the only way. They knew if they left that ship tied up in that harbour, once that hurricane had passed through, they'd have a pile of matchsticks on the shore. So they turned tail and they sailed out into the sea and um, they've, they saved the ship by doing that. And what I'd like to say to you now is, um, wherever you are in your life right now, in your cleaning of the business, in your job, in your benefits, in your family life, in your, wherever you are right now, and you have moored yourself to that shore, unless you set yourself free, you are going to have one wave after another of life smash you against those rocks and you will end up in a pile of matchsticks on the shore in your old age. You, I, my advice would be to get in your clean easy canoe and sail out into the high seas. It is your only chance of survival in the world if you have got something like this. Never mind thriving. So good luck to you all. Get in your clean, easy co canoes and paddle like fury out into those waves. Let's get it rocking and rolling. I hope that what I've said tonight is, has helped you, has maybe inspired you, has given you some, um, some fuel for your fire. And I wish you all the best of luck in your businesses. And let's make this thing like absolutely. Well, hi everybody, it's Jeff here and Fiona's still here as well. And for those of you who want to see the dogs, I'm afraid they're fast asleep on the sofas. I just cannot thank Helen enough for taking the time she's taken tonight out of her own business, out of her own family time, uh, to share her ideas and her inspiration and aspiration with all of us. So I'm just going to unfreeze the uh, text. And if you could show your appreciation with uh, some good old uh, online applause, that would be really, really fantastic. Thank you very much.